Thank you so much for time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on EMC consideration. Our topic for today discussion is actually a continue on the previous video. Today, we're going to continue to discuss on shielding effectiveness compromise. This will be the part 31 series discussion. The earlier on series discussion, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also remember to turn on your notification bell. Thank you so much, guys. Today, we are going to discuss how does the shielding effectiveness can be compromised. For slot with a dimension equal to or less than half of wavelength, the shielding effectiveness in decibel is equal to, as shown over here, this is the shielding effectiveness. Okay, this is the wavelength. This is the length of the opening slot. Okay, let's discuss about this equation first. From here, you can see that when frequency increase, my wavelength actually reduce. Okay, which means that I can actually open a bigger hole and will not affect so much on the shielding effectiveness. On the other hand, when I increase the length of the slot, you can see that the overall shielding effectiveness reduce. So in short, the shielding effectiveness is 0 dB when the slot is half of wavelength long. Okay, so imagine this length is half of wavelength, which means it's lambda over 2. Can you see that this overall becomes log 1, and log 1 is equal to 0, which means that you don't actually provide any shielding effectiveness. In short, if your opening is more than half of wavelength, okay, you are not going to provide any protection at all. So you must as well open up the shield. So this is what it means. They actually also increase 20 dB per decade okay, when the length actually reduce. Okay, reducing the stock length by one half actually increase the shielding by 6 dB. The okay, stock length for commercial product okay, is best to avoid opening greater than 1 over 20 of a wavelength. Okay, so this is to ensure that you actually have a shielding effectiveness of at least 20 dB. Multiple aperture also reduce the shielding effectiveness more severely than actually a single aperture. Okay, the magnitude of reduction actually depends on these three factors. The spacing between the aperture, the frequency, the number of aperture. Okay, so I'm going to show it to you how can we calculate the number of aperture that is going to affect the shielding effectiveness. When aperture of equal size are placed in close proximity, the reduction in the shielding effectiveness is proportional to the square root of the number of aperture n. Okay, so this is the equation to calculate the reduction of shielding effectiveness. The more n that you're going to include, the bigger will be this number. So therefore, the reduction in shielding effectiveness also increase. Hence, it's best to keep as little n or as little numbers of opening as possible so as to have a better shielding effectiveness. Aperture located on different surfaces do not decrease the shielding effectiveness. However, they radiate in different directions. Okay, so therefore, it is advantage to distribute aperture around the surface of the product to minimize the radiation in any one direction. A seams is a long, narrow slot that meet electrical contact at various points along its length. Okay, so this is what it means by seam, this gap here. Okay, the impedance across the seams consists of a resistance and a capacitor component in parallel. Due to the capacitor component, the impedance of the joint decreases with frequency. Hence, the shielding effectiveness will increase with frequency. So this little opening of a seam can model as a resistance in parallel with a capacitor. 
Okay, so what you can actually do is basically this seams overlay can increase the capacitance across the joint. So instead of one opening, okay, you can actually zigzag. With the zigzag, you actually increase the surface area. And when you actually increase the surface area, you actually increase the capacitance across this joint. Hence, you actually improve the shielding effectiveness. Okay, if the seams or the gap is of the order of half of wavelength, Okay, the seams will act as a dipole antenna. Okay, remember any opening more than half of wavelength, okay, they actually become a dipole antenna, which is capable to provide a path for the leakage. To reduce the effect of a seam, contact should exist along the seams of not more than one over 20 of a wavelength. The area of contact should be increased Contact point should not exceed 1 to 2 inch for effective frequency of up to 500 megahertz. So this is what I have shared with you. Okay, so we want to have maximized exposed surface area. When we have maximized exposed surface area, we actually increase the capacity effect, which improves the shielding effectiveness. Okay, let's do a question here. Okay, a shield contain 40 identical slots. Okay, so the numbering of opening is 4-0. It's required to have a 20 dB of shielding effectiveness at 100 megahertz. So we design a shield. Okay, we want to have 20 dB of shielding effectiveness at 100 megahertz. Okay, what is the maximum linear dimension of one slot? Which means that what is the size of the opening of one slot? Okay, so we compute in terms of the reduction in shielding effectiveness when we have 40 identical slots opening. From here, we calculate that the reduction in shielding effectiveness is 16 dB, okay, which means that if we have 40 identical slots, we actually reduce the shielding effectiveness by 16 dB. Next, okay, we are ready to calculate the shielding effectiveness when we actually open a slot. So this is the equation that I showed it to you earlier on. Okay, remember the question said that they must have a shielding effectiveness of 20 dB. And when we actually open 40 identical slot, the shielding effectiveness actually reduced by 16 dB. Hence, we need to design the shielding effectiveness of at least 36 dB in order to have 20 dB of shielding effectiveness because 16 dB is actually contributed by 40 identical slot that I'm going to open up. Once I have this equation here, I saw the lambda. I want to calculate what is the size of my lambda. The velocity, I take it as the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Frequency is given 100 meg. So I compute my wavelength as 3 meter. Okay, next, okay, I'm going to do this. This 36 divided by 20, and I'm going to remove away my log. I can calculate from here is 63.1 and I have my wavelength which is 3 meter I can actually compute what is the length so I compute that the length of the maximum linear dimension of one particular slot is 2.38 centimeter so my slot cannot be more than 2.38 centimeter if my slot keep within 2.38 centimeter I can actually guarantee that you can actually have a 20 dB of shielding effectiveness.